Hello and welcome to another video on Scream Queens. This is my thoughts on Season 2, Episode 3. This episode is called Handed It's Spoilers for this episode and the ones before it. Another episode I absolutely love. Before we get into it, in the description box there's a link to donate to the SAG After Strikers. Please do so, anything you can spare. And there are also some links to videos that help explain why this is such an important strike. And, yeah, let's dive in. So, Chanel number one still thinks that Chanel number five is the kill. Just, wow. And, yeah, Kathy is yet again covering up deaths at the, just, yeah. And almost lets, you know, and she says, I will die. And then she said, no, I mean, in like an overdramatic kind of way. I'm just going to die. Just... And the <laughs> they talk about if the if they put the corpse in the in the swamp, you know, it's, oh, it's just, no, no it's going to completely preserve the body, you know, just like those cavemen they found. You're thinking of a bog. Okay, I'm glad you took comparative wetlands, number five. And and she wants to say goodbye, and, the, and, and Chanel number one is like, oh, God, you know, just... Fairly reasonable request, you know. Apparently, you know, they did love each other. And, and she said, you know, I loved you, warts and all, which just... <laughs> I feel like that takes on a different meaning when the person you love is all warts. And, you know, she, she like, hugs him or, you know, and, and some barf comes out. Just, wow. Let's see. And, yeah, and we meet again post-procedure uh, Randall, Kevin Bigley, and... He's not screaming anymore, you know, and now it's just the, the smile on his face is just wonderful. And just, you know, he tries picking something up, dropping it, doesn't make him, you know, snap, doesn't make him scream. Flicking lights, doesn't make him scream. Wonderful, you know, and <laughs> then he sees the green meanie. And because nobody has told him that there's a serial killer loose... He has no idea, so he thinks, oh, it's it's a test to, to see if if anything can make me scream. And he's like, you know, I, I'm completely okay. I am happy to be alive. I can't wait to, to you know, go and enjoy my life. <laughs> so you're two days away from retirement is what you're saying. And let's see. Yeah, and and um, we we spend some more time with the ever wonderful Hester Ulrich, Leah Michelle, who you know demands a transfer to the Cure Hospital, and just yeah, one once again, just wonderful. I love all the the little things. I I really love the shot. Very like great work on the technical aspect. There's this one shot. Where like we see the glass and we see the reflection of Chanel number one on one side of it, and then suddenly Hester, you know, goes all the way up against it and speaks. And at no point is the focus lost. Just fantastic stuff. And you know, and the and the lighting for it is also very carefully handled. Just amazing. And. Hester says something about Chanel's skin that later she's still obsessing over. And, uh, yeah, and she, she demands some Ezran. And, you know, later they, um, it turns out to have been a clue. And Chad texts, texts to Kathy. I know who the killer is, and and Munch is like, you know, I hope you rotten here. I, we didn't even have to come here, kind of, you know. 
which I, I have a feeling that's going to bite them, that they're treating her so badly. Although, you know, I'm not blaming them. I'm just saying this is the kind of story where, you know, that's the thing. Like, there's some chance she is working with the killer, and they're just making things worse by antagonizing her, you know. But, but yeah, so the... Yeah, I, just, I really love her performance this season. I, I, you know, she was great in season one as well. But now that she's just going complete, like, unhinged kind of thing, just really, really loving it. But yeah, so they go back, and Chad, unsurprising to the audience, is saying that it's Dr. B, Do Dr. Orb, the, the B is for Bargain, who is actually the, the serial killer. And just, yeah, so many, so many great moments in this scene, you know, he, he talks, of, like, he assures Chad, my sperm is the, the most, what was it, the, the most expensive in the, in the state, or something like that, oh, we're having a sperm off, we're, we can do a sperm off, just, oh, God, and the, the, um, yeah, and and Munch and yeah, M Munch criticizes Chad. And, you know, okay, Chad is stupid. He is the dumbest person I know, and the worst lay I've ever had. You know, but I don't think he's a killer. Just, yeah, and <laughs> the yeah, so so you know the the um. Yeah, she, she agrees that they have to do something about Brock's hand. And <laughs> Chad wants to chop it off with an axe, which just, yeah. And let's see. Yeah, and, and he has these, you know, various donors prepared of... of People, you know, and, and one of them's like, you know, if we don't chop his hand off, he says he will do it himself. So, just, yeah. And then we meet um, Sheila ba Baumgartner, played by Sherry Odery, who... I don't know how I couldn't recognize her, because I've apparently seen her in a bunch of stuff. Liar, liar, Southland Tales. Oh yeah, yeah, right. I remember her in Southland Tales. Spectre Gadget. Scary movie one. Yeah, I. But she's she's fantastic, and you know, apparent you know, and and Munch says that's the fourth orgasm you've had since you came here. It's the ninth of the, uh, you know, of yeah, and it's not. It's like eight a.m. You know, what's your secret? Just because cause she's like, you know, this is amazing, which just, yeah. And, and that's one of those things, uh, you know, it sounds fun if you don't have it, but uh, uh, I believe it's called a sexual disorder is actually not particularly fun in, in real life living with it. <laughs> and she, yeah, so she was doing yoga and, you know, it happened... Her husband left her because he realized she's been faking all along, which, <laughs> just, yeah, that is a very sad and sadly very true. There's a, a lot of straight cis men who are completely incapable of, of pleasing a woman. And <laughs> she suggests, you know, she says, look, you can, I don't care what you need to do, just do whatever, you know, if you need to surgically remove the vagina. And number three, like, you can you can do that? How do you remove negative space? Just Billy Lord, fantastic as always on this show. Just so funny. And the others are like, oh no, she's serious, isn't she? She really doesn't understand. Just, yeah. And <laughs> they're, so, so yeah, number number three and, and Cas Cascade, Taylor Lautner, are cleaning up, and, you know, apparently Chad, you know, he claimed he was, like, ah, crap, what was the, he was cleaning, he was, he was practicing surgery, 
But all he was doing was chopping off hands and, you know, just, yeah. Which, you know, at the time sounds like, oh, yeah, because he's fantasizing about chopping off, you know, Dr. Brock's hand. But apparently it's to prepare himself to cut off someone else's hand so that Dr. Brock can get that person's hand. Just, yeah. And... Yeah, and and you know, apparently Chanel number three has never had an orgasm, which helps explain like she is always just she seems like she's only almost only ever happy when something bad is happening to someone else. So yeah, I can one hundred percent buy that she is not has has never had an orgasm. And you know, Cassidy says that sucks. They, you know, orgasms are pretty much the only thing that everyone agrees are are great. Until Hamilton was right, you know, and then they go off on Hamilton, and like I one hundred percent believe that um, Ryan Murphy absolutely loves Hamilton, but is also you know, the dude made Glee. It's it's you know, an an entire musical show. I can imagine that he really loved Hamilton, but the some of it also sounds like he's making fun of the and and it really it is ridiculously like I've I, I haven't seen it you know maybe it's the best thing in the world, but it sounds like I've watched The Dark Knight I've seen the reactions I love that movie I can acknowledge the reactions are hyper are hyperbolic you know the, there's like it's an amazing movie. But some people went just ridiculously far with, you know. So I feel like that's probably what what happened with Hamilton and what they're making fun of in this scene. And I do appreciate, you know, even number three does really love Hamilton. But, you know, like the line, you know, it reinvented theater is like, eh, I don't know, that sounds kind of, that sounds hyperbolic. That does not sound like something that, you know, I do think it's really cool that they, you know, they finally did a rap musical, and it's like the, the uh, Broadway did, I mean, I, I believe there's other rap musicals, but I, I'm pretty sure I heard that that was the first one on Broadway, and, you know, I, I know not everybody likes colorblind casting, but if you're gonna tell a story about all these white dudes, you know, ha actually casting people of color is, you know, we need more representation, so, yeah. And, let's see, yeah, and, and apparently Cassidy is, is dead, and he's not quite sure how it works, you know, maybe it's a zombie sitch, like, Night of the Living Dead. I appreciate that he, like, like there's so many zombie movies he could have referenced, but it's the it's the tar zombie, it's the brains one. It's just yeah, you know, there's there's so many that they could have chosen, but it's it's one of the goofiest. But but yeah, just <laughs> he he fell asleep on his back. Even though he knew, you know, he might choke on his vomit, and he woke up, and he was dead. And, you know, so, yeah, now he has really cold lips, which I have to imagine is, like, a reference to Twilight, where he's the one who's hot, and the one who's cold is Edward, so just, yeah. And, and yeah, we see the, you know, they're, they're playing Scrabble, and... Chanel number one is still upset about the comment Hester made about her skin, and she's like, you know, I don't know exactly what it is that that I'm using. You know, maybe it's uh, what's it like? What may, uh, maybe it's like sperm cells? Maybe it's like it's, um the the uh, what are they called again? It's uh, never never mind. But you know, from just. Yeah, it's and and number five thinks cavity is spelled with a B. It's just wow. And apparently, like 
Zayday is ahead of her by 350 points. Holy crap. How long have they been playing? I don't or or is the scoring completely different from just that's that sounds pretty ridiculous. Anyway, the but but yeah, she does manage to let's see. Yeah, yeah, the, the, um, you know, that's when <clears throat> Zayde realizes about Esrin. Right, and, and then we get to, to Chad Radwell, Glenn Powell, presenting the candidates. And Aaronette Muskrote, which, wow. I, I appreciate, like, they're, they're pretty dedicated. Every single, like, they're constantly... Chad is constantly instigating these very homoerotic, like, confrontations, and it's like, you know, I mean, it's a power move, you know, the, the, you're, you're very exposed, fairly literally, you're, you're, you know, so it's, you know, confronting someone in, like, a bathroom is like, you know, the, the yeah. It's, it, you know, no no one's going to come to their aid. No one can, can hear or see where they, you know, there's a There's a lot of elements to it. But each time, he's naked, and he's doing it specifically when Holt is naked. Like, dude, just wait, like, five or ten minutes. I'm sure the guy is going to get dressed before he leaves the room, you know, just... But he keeps insisting on doing it like that, just, you know... Although I guess after this episode, maybe no more, which is is really too bad. I'm really gonna miss the character of Chad Randwell. He's he's my favorite male character on the show. You know, obviously, like the female characters are even better. Like, there's no topping Chanel Oberlin or Kathy Munch or Hester, but just yeah. <laughs> and and Doctor Brolt says, you know, there's no way that Munch is going to let you perform the, the surgery. No way, yes way. Just, and, and, you know, he has several reasons why the, you know, the surgery. One of them is our wings are about the same size. Let's see. And, yeah, so they go to, to Ezrin. Denise Hemphill still suspects Zadie, and, and Zadie's like, will you give it a rest? Just, yeah. And, yeah, so we meet Nurse Lynn Johnstone, and they they do the joke about how, you know, he's somewhat, you know, he, he looks slightly feminine, he has this feminine name. Now, apparently, Alec... The, the character's played by Alec Mappa, and I, I, you know, I didn't really know this guy until watching this episode, um, although he, you know, apparently he's, he's doing great work for the LGBTQIA plus community, so that's great, but in, you know, in real life, he is a gay man, as far as I've been able to tell, he is cis, but yeah, some really... You know, I, I the the show continues to do this thing where they will do the offensive joke, but they're actually casting someone. You know, in, in season one, they had a the the girl playing De Def Taylor Def Taylor Swift actually is deaf, and you know she she did an interview where she talked about you know a lot of the a lot of the jokes she she liked, and she actually suggest you know apparently. Originally, it was supposed to be, oh, she's hearing impaired, and she went to them and said, I think you should change it to deaf. You know, there's no, we can make, you know, it's okay to make jokes about deaf people. And, um, ah, oh, crap, I, I forget her name, but I'll have it momentarily. Sam, uh, you know, actually is, a, a, um, you know, a, an androgynous Asian lesbian, which, you know, it's, it, and it's one of those things, like, sometimes you'll get at least one of those three, but it's usually, like, a side character. For, for a long time, they barely got any representation, and when they finally got some, it was usually negative, 
and here's a character who's all three of these things, and, you know, there are some very offensive jokes with her, but she's not, like, made out to be bad for being those things. So, yeah, you know, this is a continuation of that trend, and, yeah, you know, I, I think, you know, it's it's not for everyone, but, you know, any any gay man who is like, yes, please, you know, let's let's make fun of, you know, you know, you can make fun of me, you know, I, I think the, the, you know, it's not a, it's the, the you know, ah, what's the word, um, you know, nobody, nobody should be, should have to face ridicule for something that's, you know, not hurting anyone, but some people do, you know, some members of minority groups do want jokes made about them. So, yeah, for for that, I, you know, let's see. Yeah, and we, yeah, we learned Lynn witnessed, or, or you know, did not the killings, but saw all the, the deaths afterward and sells this common product on a th three or four times markup, which I don't know enough about the subject, but I feel like that's probably that's a that's a pretty solid burn on like the the beauty industry. And let's see, yeah, and and they talk about so so yeah, they talk about you know maybe it was the the baby from the, you know, maybe it was the pregnant woman, maybe it was the guy the, that they, they dumped, and the, the, you know, he was feminized by the, the, you know, because they're, they're sure that it's a female voice threatening Lynn, you know, just, yeah, let's see, and actually, yeah, the, they, you know, so the, the idea, you know, there, there's a, it is, a really transphobic trope that you know trans people are like killers you know that there's a yeah there's a uh, an entire history of of that in cinema but here it's it feels to me like they're making fun of that because like the person suggesting oh maybe it was you know maybe it's a trans woman doing you know maybe maybe the serial killer is a trans woman you know that it's Chanel number five. She has really stupid, weird ideas a lot of the time, and the others are like, "Please make her stop." Just you know, so so I feel like that is an intentional, you know. And they're also, you know, there they've there have been a lot of jokes about the sounds of the lambs. You know, pretty much every Hester scene this season has had at least some. So, which is notoriously transphobic. And, yeah, so, you know, Munch is, is happy to be, you know, I, I flew private, you know, I only ever fly private, which is, again, you know, just, yeah. If you think that public transportation is terrible, and you have the money for private jets, spend your money to improve public transportation, you know, but yeah, so the Chanel's had to fly southwest, and they get a great joke about that in there. I love that Dr. Holt, like, he sees Chad about to cut off the, the hand, and he's just, like, standing off in the corner, like, you know, you're not doing that, right? Like, instead of, like, rushing, what are you doing? Like, you know, because... He's not giving the guy any sedative, and, and then he's like, you know what? I'm not going to sedate either one of you. And, yeah, so they talk about, you know, the killer would have to be, like, 30 years old, so it can't be Chad. No, no, he was held back in the second grade by a bunch of years, so he actually is 30. Imagine not being able to pass the second grade many years in a row, like that. Wow. And 
Yeah, and and so Cassidy and number three are trying to find out, you know, the what's yeah, they're trying to determine the thing with, with Sheila. And I appreciate that number three says, can I just say before we begin, yoga is just stretching for douchebags. Which I feel like there there might be some truth to I I don't know enough about yoga. Let's see. But but yeah, they do manage to to solve it. The the Yeah. And Chad is asked you know yeah, asked number one for a you know, Emma Roberts for a walk and talk. And she's like, When have you ever asked for a walk and I went and bought a stun gun to you know he hired a mariachi band not to propose but to hand her a prenup for her team of lawyers to look over. <laughs> and she's like, Are you asking me to marry? You? No, I honestly you're probably not gonna want to marry me after reading the prenup. Just, yeah. And, you know, Dr. Brock is off watching, and then, you know, Chad looks again, and he's gone. You know, just great horror trope. You know, it's one of those things, like, was he ever really there? I gotta say, I, I've, I've really always liked John Stamos, you know, the, but I didn't, before watching this, I don't think I would have really guessed that he could do like dark, you know, hidden secret kind of thing. But you know, he's he's impossibly charming. Let's see. And you know, it, it, the the I'm not gonna spend forever talking about uh, Full House. Yeah, when it was first on, I watched it. I was the appropriate. You know, I was a child at the time when it was airing. The the it's one of those things where, you know, I'm not the first person to say it, but I, it bears repeating. When you watch it as a kid, you're like, oh, Uncle Jesse, coolest man alive. And then you become an adult that's like, my God, this man was pathetic. Like, living in the, you know, just, yeah. The living arrangement was pretty sad, considering his age. Like, yeah. But the kids thought he was cool, and the, that was who was supposed to appeal to. And yeah, so they, they managed to, you know, cure Sheila. And, you know, there's these meaningful hand touches between Cascade and number three. And she's wearing pink scrubs because that's, you know, wait, she can't not wear pink. Are you crazy? That's, you know, she has, or it doesn't have to be pink, but she has to wear something feminine, even in that, you know, she has to present this, you know, hyper feminine ideal. So just, yeah. You know. And yeah, you know, it does, of course, lead to Cassidy trying to give her an orgasm. And she points out, I can't do it to R&B. It stands for rhythm and blues. But it's the least bluesy music, and the rhythm isn't that memorable. You know, is is not the best thing about it. And it's like, this this is true. And like, you know, I can't do it to New Jack Swing. It always reminds me of that movie New Jack City. And then I just think about Wesley Snipes and his troubles with the IRS, and it's so sad. And <laughs> I mean, it is it is that was a bad situation. But I get the feeling that she's saying it was sad that he was punished for not paying his taxes. And I'm going to have to disagree with her on that one. Let's see. And, and yes, I, I'm pretty sure that is the joke. And, yeah, so, you know, she, she points out, you know, he's really cold. And it's like, I guess her answer is no to do you want to hug a snowman? And Ch Chad goes to, to Dr. Brock and says, you know, uh, I, I need help tying this old-timey, you know, um, bow tie. I guess he's going to cosplay as early, 
you know, early days of TV appearances, Tucker Carlson. And I thought, you know, I would, you know, maybe I could get help from someone who was actually around during the Civil War, which, and, and yeah, you know, he says, you know, I need a, a best man. All my bros are, you know, all the, the frat bros are dead, and, you know, yeah, and, and Brock is like, don't you have brothers? Which would have been great to see, you know, they were, both of his brothers were incredibly funny, you know, in, in the, in the Thanksgiving episode. I am gonna get the names real quick. The season one episode, which was, in addition to being a Thanksgiving episode, wow, it's the, it's one of the top rated episodes, and I, can see why. Yeah, Chad Michael Murray plays Brad Radwell, and Patrick Schwarzenegger plays Thad Radwell. Now, he's not, like, Patrick does not have, or at least not in that role. I, I'll admit I haven't seen him in that many things, but he does not seem to have the charisma of his father, but he was really, really funny in, in that. And I just want to note, you know, not brother, father, but the father's name is Tad. Tad Radwell, but yeah, it would have been really funny seeing them again. I guess maybe they could do like a funeral thing and and have them because they they were incredibly funny. Just yeah, the but but yeah, you know he does he wants to save his brothers for the second wedding because that's the one that sticks, you know. And you know we have the the you know so yeah. Chad turns his back on Brock, and Brock comes up with his hand, and you know, around the neck. And no, he's just time to book time, you know. And and Ted, Chad does point out, you're tiny, kind of tight, aren't you? That's the point. And yeah, so the the. <laughs> I just want you to know, in six months, when you two break up, I'm gonna have sex with Chanel. I wouldn't have it any other way. Want to s hookers to celebrate? No. <laughs> like, he's literally been standing there talking about how, you know, he doesn't want to cheat on Chanel, and now he wants hookers to so just, you yeah. know. And I love the details we get about Chanel's ring. You know, it's so heavy that it comes with its own on-call chiropractor, it, you know, it's, it's cut the way Russian, you know, trophy wives want, and it's its own Wi-Fi hotspot. <laughs> oh my god. And Chanel, you know, turns to Chanel number three, would you be my bridesmaid? Oh, yeah, you know, and, and... Zayde, Kiki Palmer, would you be my bridesmaid? Oh, of course, yeah. And and Chanel number five is sitting there, like huge smile on her face, just really, really excited because she knows what's coming. She thought, "Would you be my ring bearer?" <laughs> it's like, what is it? well, we're not that close. And and she apparently wants her to to put on like a furry costume and and everything, which. You know, she ends up not doing, but she does wear, like, a, a bone, uh, you know, doggy bone kind of necklace, so, yeah. I guess that's that was the, the compromise they reached. <laughs> and Sheila is like, you know, this, this is amazing, and Zadie is like, oh, you know, you're the first person we've cured who survived. What? Oh, nothing. <laughs> And and Sheila says, you know, she called the the press, so they're gonna be here, which is of course gonna cause some problems next episode when they have to hide that. And let's see, yeah, and and you know, the green meanie shows up, throws the the like, I guess it's not a scythe, a hand, handheld. I forget what it's handheld side. That's where we're going with, uh, you know, chopping the head off, and does like a full spin and blood sprays out. You know, it's so the the it's not the 
most um, what's the word right and and also attacks uh, Shane Bloom. They don't have quite as you know the the like practical effects are are not you know it's season one had a lot of great practical effects. There's been some this season as well, but the the yeah, it still it it looked real good and it seemed like the the blood spurt might have been practical and yeah does not attack Zade, which of course makes you wonder and the, the <laughs> Hester is now in the full cannibal mask and and strapped down like you know when when they were transporting Hannibal Lecter and you know she says it's too late and laughs maniacally and you know so there's the the wedding and you know Chad ha isn't showing up and you know normally he's supposed to well you know but, oh you know he said to you know I should come first to the the and you know then some some blood drips and you know f body falls through the the ceiling and it's it's Chad and that does really really make Dr. Brock look guilty cuz like he wasn't happy about the wedding and just yeah and i suppose that might be what i had to say but yeah um another really excellent episode really really funny the the scares were great I, I you know the character of Randall was a great twist on the 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 thing of the right and and just briefly you know excellent acting by Jamie Lee Kurtz as usual really loved Nisi Nash as Denise Hemphill as usual but yeah when when you know Randall like we've seen there's a lot of slasher movies where someone is in an obvious dangerous situ obviously dangerous situation and they're not at all taking it seriously. And so to literally have the guy think, oh, it's like a test to see if I still spook easily, kind of, you know, that was a, a fun twist on, on that. So quite appreciate that. And yeah, that is it for this one. So yeah, um, catch you next week. Keep screaming, queens. <laughs>